Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with tarot symbolism, the eighth numbered card, La Justice. An article taken from the All Seeing Eye, Volume 5, Number 10, July 1931. The number eight was truly a mysterious number, and even to this day, little has been discovered concerning its symbolism. In naming the eighth card of the tarot deck Justice, the unknown originator of these cards followed the classification of Macrobius, the Pythagorean, who said that the eight signifies justice because when divided equally, two fours result, and these signify the equilibrium of the two worlds, Eight was called by the Eleusinian initiates, the little number of the wise men, and on the eighth day of the mysteries was celebrated the feast of Esculapius, the god of medicine and healing. The prenatal life of man was divided into nine parts according to the months of the period of gestation, the eighth month being assigned to the moon. The sphere of the moon is seemingly one of equilibrium between the superior and inferior worlds. It stands, so to speak, between the sun and the earth, and souls descending into generation were first immersed in the lunar humidity. This humidity was the mysterious water of Lethe, or forgetfulness. Those who partook of it no longer remembered their divine origin and knew of no other life than the corporal one into which they were soon to be ushered. Very likely, this is the original meaning and origin of the term lunacy. For those who have been immersed in the lunar vibrations, cease to be rational creatures and manifest that kind of madness, which is the keystone of mortal life. All but the wise are mad, for wherever irrationality and inconsistency afflict the reason, the sanity may legitimately be questioned. Pythagoras declared that the souls of men were born into the bodies of animals, by which he inferred that all physical bodies are actually animal, regardless of their shape or kind. Man being actually human, only in his reasoning part, but animal in his sensations and perceptions, Birth was regarded as a major calamity by the ancients, which could only be atoned for by intelligently dying. A birth was more or less controlled by lunar activity. The moon came to be regarded as the emblem of catastrophe, so the Kabbalists affirmed that a child born in the eighth month of the prenatal epoch and consequently under the lunar ray could not live. The scales which Justice carries in her hand are associated with the constellation of Libra, which is also the point of equilibrium in the zodiac. It is the sign according to the secret tradition, which was inserted at the time when the division of the sexes took place. The old zodiac had but ten signs, which made Capricorn lord of the eighth sign and it is known that Capricorn and Cancer were the ancient gates of birth and death celebrated in the mysteries. The Justice card is an ever-present reminder that unbalanced forces perish in the void and that equilibrium and immortality are synonymous terms. It is common to mortal natures that they should incline towards some extreme, thus verging from temperance. These fluctuations of the soul constitute the major difference between man and the gods. The divinities are immovable, being established upon an eternal foundation. Man is movable, being established only upon a temporal foundation. By acquiring wisdom, the philosophers taught that man might stabilize his soul and thus approach a divine state. The instability of the inner nature manifests itself through the uncertainty of outer actions. Today we are moved in this direction, tomorrow in that. Today we follow one impulse, tomorrow another. These oppositions within ourselves are symbolized by the tilting of the pans of the balance, being balanced in all things. However, the wise men is just, for there can be no justice apart from balance. 
Justice really signifies integrity and in action through sufficient reasons and in the card we see symbolically set forth, the qualifications and attributes of a wise or just man. The figure is seated, for the wise are immovable and securely established. The animal upon the lower part of the throne represents the body which has become the pedestal or base upon which the higher integrity has enthroned itself. Justice is raised upon a dais of three steps to signify that equilibrium and balance are supreme over the three worlds. The figure is female, intimating that true justice is based not upon the male attribute of force, but upon gentleness and virtue, and that the comprehension of it is through intuition rather than thought. It is difficult to realize that reason is a process higher than thinking, belonging at least in part to the sphere of consciousness. Such was the doctrine, however, taught by the ancients. The figure carries in one hand the scales of fair measure and true weighing. In the other, it holds the sword of clear discrimination, which, like the Hindu sword of quick detachment, divides the false from the true. The upward pointing sword further reveals enlightened will, for will is the weapon of right purpose. Justice is crowned with the globe of abundance, surmounted by the triple coronet of the Logos. Justice is thereby empowered by the very gods to weigh all things and to pass judgment upon them according to the degree by which they fall short of perfection. The two lamps are the twofold mind, the spiritual mind which perceives motive and causes, and the temporal mind which perceives action and effects. Eliphas Levi declares that each initiate must carry with him the lamp of Hermes, the sufficient light which lightest the glow from his own illumined soul. Only the inner light can dispel the outer darkness, which individually consequently lives in a world radiant either with the sunshine of his own soul or obscured and clouded by the ignorance within him. The internal light is the eternal light, Whereas, such illumination as comes from without is illusionary and corporal. To this symbol we have added a small hourglass in a shield. It will be noted that the body of the hourglass forms the figure 8. The hourglass was an ancient symbol of equilibrium because it reveals the periodic alternations of the world. The hourglass is turned hourly so that every 60 minutes the lower globe becomes the upper and vice versa. The upper sand continually flowing into the lower thus sets forth the descent of souls from their incorporeal into their corporeal state. And by reversing the glass, these souls pour back again into the globe from which they came. The hourglass also reveals how time acts as the instrument of justice, for in time all things receive their just desserts. Time outlasts everything but itself, and is at last absorbed into eternity. The gods are symbols of time. The boon which they bestow is time, and in the midst of time is raised the throne of justice which weighs and measures those actions which are performed during time. The continually flowing sands of the hourglass are warning to the wise that time is not limitless, but that to each creature is given time to accomplish these adjustments between himself and the universe, which ensure his immortality. As the sands pass through the glass, so the ages of the earth have their exact boundaries of limitation, there is nothing that is not measured as to its duration, and all are responsible for the use which they make of the opportunities which time bestows. The figure eight is a lemiscuit, an endless twisting band which signifies cosmic motion, and the orderly procedure of those heavenly bodies from whose motion mortals measure time. As this lemiscuit is without beginning and without end, it becomes a type for the revolutions of the inferior bodies in the heaven about their superiors. The lesser gods or genii continually encircle the eternal throne of the unmoved one, even as passing fancies revolve about the center of man's mind. The eight, therefore, becomes the number of the planets of the side-real system.
It is even our solar system itself, composed of the seven sacred planets, enclosed within a composite wholeness or eighth sphere. The wholeness is, platonically speaking, a divinity whose parts and members are the seven planets. Thus, the god of the world may be considered as symbolized by the eight or the first cube. For in geometrical symbolism, the cube is the proper symbol of the world, its eight quarters being the eight Cabrai gods who form the world. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.